Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So, up until yesterday, I'd finished with this TBR1 car. Um, I fully restored the shell and the plan yesterday was to take it out for a very light, a very tame um, running video on tarmac. Pretty decent weather. So the video started well, um, but then I discovered a small patch of mud, loose mud, and uh, I started to have a little bit of a play with it and to be honest, it was great fun. Uh, basically I got far too carried away and this happened <sighs> so as you can see um, I've, 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 I made a, an absolute terrible mess of the car so as I say I had planned that was the end of the car but um, in this video what we need to do is um, a full chassis strip down because you just can't leave when I got it when I got it back yesterday I cleaned it off best I can got all the, the proper dirt off of it but as you can imagine it, it, the dirt's everywhere so I thought that's, this is a really good opportunity to a full tear down of the TBO one chassis and um, and basically start again with it and, and let's make it mint right so first job's going to be get the wheels off get the shocks off get the radio gear out get the motor out because as I say, I won't be running this car again. But I thought I'd just take this quick opportunity to show you um, this Tamiya craft tool set in case you've never seen one. They're about $25, $30 on eBay and there's nothing better for working on your Tamiya cars. Um, I used to use sort of just normal sort of modelling screwdrivers and things. But um, this set is obviously made for the um, Tamiya hardware stuff. So in the set you get um, two box um, Allen uh, box spanners one's your wheel nut size and then there's the next one down um, you get two posies um, and you get three um, allen head they're absolutely awesome you also get um, a handle so obviously that fits in like that just to give you a little bit extra um, awesome sets dirt cheap I, I think for the money um, so I'm just putting that out there in case you guys have never seen that So as you can see, it's a mess. Um, God, it's everywhere. Uh, I'm not complaining because the, the run was awesome. Um, so I, I'm just going to keep stripping down. So next stage is we'll get the receiver speedo, speedo motor and we'll get the steering servo out. Um, when I'm taking the wheels off, I notice, listen. All four, all four tyres, I've got a lot of... Um, dust and gravel in them. Now the issue I have is these were glued so on the front rims are glued but on the backs it's off so I'm gonna have to, <laughs> have to try and get that out somehow. Oh dear. Um, right let's get that radio gear out. Right, so that's the radio gear out. I've cleaned it up. Um, this is with a view now to fit um, in the next rally car, which is the Ford Tiger Strike Cosworth on the T801 chassis. So I'm really happy with this. Tam standard Tamiya TBLO2, Spectrum radio gear, standard 540 motor, tactic um, steering servo, and I run it on 2S, and it's just about perfect. Um, so anyway, that's that stuff's good for another day. Um, let's get the shocks off the car now. Right, just about got all the plastics out, all the screws out. I've got them in, bo in boiling hot soapy water. I'm um, just about to start that clean up process. But I just wanted to show you guys this. This is the first time I've worked on a TBO one. Look at the metal diffs. How cool is that? Metal, be metal bevel gears. I had no idea that was going to be inside. Um, I'll clean these up. I don't know if I'm going to go into them. 
Um, I maybe should. But uh, anyway, I'll come back to that. But I just thought I'd show you guys that. Okay, Curiosity got the best of men. I had to open them up. I'm very impressed with that. Metal Gears. Metal Gear diff. So cool. And in absolutely top shape. Look at that. Oops. Very, very cool. They're greased up, but um, definitely want more in. So we'll clean the metal off. We'll rinse the plastics out and then we'll uh, we'll rebuild them so this is definitely a full strip down right guys that's it all cleaned up <clears throat> bit of a mission that to be honest still a little bit of clean up work to do sort of in the with the fine detail but i'll i'll do that as i um, come to fit the parts but it's all quite nice now Definitely going to need a new bearing set, but um, I just don't have one here, unfortunately. Um, so I think next stage now is download the manual, um, let everything make sure everything's dry before we start building. Uh, that's all the screws in there. So uh, it's going to be like building a brand new car again. Happy days. So before I start building this, I just wanted to share with you guys in case you didn't know. Uh, you can download manuals and take copies of manuals directly from Google. Um, I could probably build this from memory, um, but I don't want to make any mistakes and more so get something in the wrong order, so I have to take something back apart. So, as I say, it's just for any novices who's watching this. Jump onto Google, type in what car it is, um, and you will be able to find downloadable manuals, which is so much easier for building. Um, I hope that helps. I have to say before we start building this, the, the parts quality in this kit for a 21 year old cut kit is putting the new TTO2 kits to shame. I mean look at that prop shaft. I, I mean the downside is it's weighty but you know I mean it's it's pure quality. All the metal diff gears, I mean that's awesome. Metal cups, metal drive shafts, the um, adjustable camber links and of course it came fully ball raced. You know to get a TTO2 to this spec, you're gonna to have to double the price of the kit, you know, to get it to this level. And whether it's any better at the end of it, I really don't know. Um, as I say, the TBO1 kit, I, I love, since I got this car, I've loved it and it drives superb. But seeing the parts in it that just came as standard, absolutely awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and it just goes against exactly what I've just said, um, I'm just gonna build um, these parts up first which obviously probably wouldn't be in order of the manual but it'll allow me to get rid of these parts so obviously we've got the two diffs to build up um, I've got the uh, diff grease and Tamiya grease to use um, I'll also get these cleaned a little bit better we'll get the bearings in there uh, and we'll build the shocks up using um, Tamiya soft oil um, and that'll allow me to at least get um, those parts out of the way Right, that's my stage one complete. So obviously we've got the um, dampers made up, new fresh oil in there, super smooth. I've fitted the eight bearings into the um, cups and we've built the two diffs. What a pleasure those diffs are to build. Uh, and we've put the bearings on either side. So uh, now I'm gonna go back to the manual um, and see what's next. So I just thought I'd show you the um, gearboxes and how they go together. So that's one of them finished. Obviously front and back's identical. Nice and smooth. Obviously that's, that'll get trued up with the prop shaft. And I'll just left this one open just so you could see how it goes together. Uh, in that case, it just goes straight. So once you've got your grease in, that just locates, pushes together. Nice tight fit, four screws. Right, let's get that done. So next stage is completed. Um, you you build both identical, although you do have to be careful. Um, this is a rear which has slightly longer arms and slightly wrong, longer um, camber link. Um, so I'm 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 saying that's a rear uh, just because it's um, the longer arms. I, I might have it the wrong way around. But anyway, both gearboxes are built with the arms on. Um, and the cups are now in the rear uprights. 
Right, that's both front and rear gearboxes done. Everything um, connected up as it should be. That's the front with the steering. So um, yeah, we're good to go. So I believe the next stage is starting to um, do some work on the chassis. Right, that's the first bit of the chassis and it's a steering mechanism to go in. So there's um, seven screws countersunk that goes into the chassis that holds this prop shaft plate on. Um, and the steering's in. So as you can see, that, um, that's your servo and that's basically how that works. A couple of tricky washers to get underneath. What I'm just showing you in the picture now is this sponge that's missing that protects this steering. Um, I never had one. I guess I could make one. Um, but for now, um, we'll just carry on like this. Just putting the prop shaft together. That goes, little pin there, goes through. Turn that, the gear locates. Um, bearing goes on the end, slide that down, and then the motor mount, this plate only fits one way, like that, and then obviously that's the bearing housing, so you feed that through, push down, and locate, and that's the prop shaft. So that's the rear end in place, um, I just thought I'd put, try to do a front on camera, just so you can see how it goes together, it's cool. So this little bit of foam, which I'm guessing protects that bearing from dust. Then we get the front gearbox. That just slides along, located onto the prop shaft like that. That goes into position. And then we have this bumper. I'm calling it a bumper. And four countersunk screws. Oops, just gets it all located nicely before we tighten it up. I'll go back and tighten them up, but um, we'll just zoom up a little bit so we can see it all. So that's basically the car come together now, and obviously when I turn the wheels, all four are now driving. It's a little bit hard to do it with that, but um, anyway, shaft, that's a bit easier. Right, so I'll go back tighten them screws up and then we'll see what's next. Right, next stage done, so we've bolted the top of either end of these chassis plates on and then the top deck goes across, um, steering linkage is snapped on, that's cool. Um, so next up now we've got the shocks to fit, um, what else have we got, and um, we've got the body post to fit. So I've just fitted the rear shocks on, no problems, but we had a little, well, a, a big-ish problem. Just fitted the fronts on. Um, not know if it's split when I've done it or if it was split already. Um, I'll just try to zoom in. So where these top of the shocks go on, if you can see that. There's a crack there, and on both a crack on both sides. Where are we? Yeah, you can see it. Look, that is such a shame. As I say, I don't know if that's. Let me just zoom out. Don't know if that's something that you know. I mean, we're working on twenty-year-old plastic, um, so that's that's going to need replacing or some kind of repair. Um, but I'm going to leave it because obviously this car's not running again. Um, it's a shame. Right, almost there. Um, so obviously the wheels are on now. Um, everything's pretty sweet, to be honest. Nice and smooth. Obviously it's the first time you can feel, it pro feel the diffs properly. But um, all very nice and steering. Oops. Everything's nice, very free. And obviously shocks. So, final and last stage now is just to get some product and get the um, dust cover and driver unit cleaned up and then spruce the shell up, figure out where the um, the mounting pins go to get it the correct height. Um, so let's get cracking with that. And that's pretty much it. I always obviously have it sat down really low um, just for looks. I like a nice low stand on them. Um, but to run it should probably be up one, one pin on 
each mounting hole. But um, anyway, you've seen the shell, so I don't really want to go on to that, but um, I just wanted to show you it, it was sort of cleaned up. Driver's section inside cleaned up. And she's done. Um, a lot of work, but a lot of very enjoyable work for me. Um, it, but it's quite a big commitment to do a full tear down, uh, and if you do it quite regular like I do, it becomes a little bit hard work. But um, I think the rewards of doing it afterwards are, are great, to be honest. Um, so again, that's pretty much it. As I said, um, that's this car officially retired. Although there's one more thing I'm gonna do to it, um, which I'm gonna do to this Scooby, the blue Scooby, and the Cosworth. I'm um, just waiting for some decals to arrive and I'll do all three cars together. Um, but yeah, all in all, this has been an absolute pleasure. Sorry, I've just got a little bit to get off that decal. This TBO one has been an absolute pleasure. It, I've, I've made loads of videos with it um, and it runs so sweet for a 20 year old car. And as I said earlier, you know, the TTO2 is sort of Tamiya's latest chassis of this spec. and. Well, that's the thing, it isn't this spec. You know, as I showed you all the parts on this as standard from 20 years ago, to buy and fit those new parts on the TTO2, you'll double the price of that kit. So it just shows you this This is a way better kit. Um, I probably should have weighed them to see the difference, but I've run the TTO2 a couple of times, and um, it's great, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's as good as the TBO1. I really don't. Absolutely class. So anyway, I'll shut up. But um, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, if you are new to this channel, if you could consider liking and subscribing to support us for our weekly videos. And to make sure you don't miss any videos, please smash that notification bell, because we're posting two to three times weekly. Um, but as always, guys, the most important bit of this is happy our scene.